Hi, my name is Nigel Kent. I'm 73 years old and gay. As I say, I've always been gay, but I've only been 73 for a while. <laughs> they say start out with a joke, but you know, life is a joke. <laughs> That's just, let me let me tell you what the real joke is. Life sucks and then we die. Now that sounds a little pessimistic, but if you accept that as your basic premise, everything else you starts looking up, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I was I had a little incident where I had to depend on some some uh, medical people for a while and they they kept asking me who was my primary care provider. And I said, "Well, you know, frankly, for the last uh, 40 years or so I have been because uh, the medical community uh, abandoned me. I was gay for a while and then I didn't have any money for a long, long time. So I've always been on my own as far as the medicine is concerned. And as far as the science is concerned, I pretty much <laughs> from about the age of 20, pretty much knew more about uh, medicine and science than, than most doctors. Sad to say, because they were they were dealing with uh, an, an education system that really dumbed them down, and uh, only only just recently they're, they're beginning to acknowledge the effects that DNA has on medicine. Uh, it, they're dealing also with acupuncture, which is <laughs> which is about on the other end of the scale of, of science. But anyhow, be that as it may, I I'm my own medical provider, and I provide pretty much for everything else. My own my own politics, my own philosophy, my own um, physics, my own, uh, you know, I'm my own com comfort and my own love. So why am I doing a video? Not for my benefit. It's for yours. If you care to learn anything from it, fine. If you don't, you know, you're wasting your time. So I'm moving right along here. We, uh, we have in the last, uh, in my lifetime, we've gone from the point of building atomic bombs, which were basically uh, hunks of plutonium stuck together and, uh, and allowed to go into uh, a chain reaction, what was referred to as an uncontrolled chain reaction, and that was and that would result in an explosion out of energy and, and material spewing forth uh, some radioactive uh, de debris for quite a for, for, to the end of time. So uh, there was then they were uh, then they progressed from that to the big bomb, uh, which Oppenheimer tried to block, but they ended up going on the 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 military uh, put an end run around him and and uh, and they built the atomic uh, the hydrogen bomb the hydrogen bomb basically is is hydrogen molecules that are slammed together uh, by an atomic uh, bomb explosion uh, with such energy that it creates matter now the the atomic explosion uh, it, it, uh, destroys electron uh, molecules and the hydrogen explosion uh, forces a, a matter into molecules. It turns a, a, a it turns a, a hydrogen in, in into uh, He2 and, and and other materials. It makes it makes uh, a higher level. If you know the um, if you know like hydrogen is a you know hydrogen neon you know you go up the uh, molecular scale one two three anyhow uh, it multiplies and creates a more complex uh, material. That's the hydrogen explosion. We have gone from that into uh, into research on the on the atomic structure. The process that's um, involved uh, at uh, present time, the cutting edge of that, is exploding protons and that's going on at, at CERN. Uh, the that's uh, exploding protons <laughs> as interestingly uh, as it is. I've got a link on my uh, uh, I'll have a link here on this uh, <coughs> on this website, and there's a link on my Facebook page as well. Uh, but exploding protons is is uh, not that is not that easy, but it's, it's done, you know. So it's gonna run, that's gonna run for a while. We're still <laughs> we're still running all of the all of the accelerators that preceded uh, CERN uh, for uh, various reasons. One of which is economic, because you know people need a job. Uh, <laughs> so, well, you know, let's face, let's face it. If you got, if you're sitting in, if you're sitting in Geneva, Switzerland, in, a, in this air-conditioned office, 
you know, you can say, well, this, this is done now, let's go back to the campus and teach those dumbass kids. Oh, no, no. We've got to continue this. We have to continue here. My goodness. Be quiet. We're not done yet. we just begun. <laughs> now, never, you never know. Now, here's something I, you know, I see Democrats suck less of my political speech. And here's why. I, I was all gung-ho for Proxfire, one of our politicians around here. And, uh, and he was actually a fairly decent man. But the dumb, he was a dumbass. <laughs> he got he got on this crusade that these uh, government sp uh, sponsored uh, basic research projects were were pork. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. But you know, you just he had to get reelected, and so he had to pick something. And it basically was the least thing that he could get rid of. You know, he supported Social Security and you know public uh, retirement plans and everything else. He, had to pick something. Hell, he even fought for uh, minimum wage and 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 the uh, and the world world uh, weather day whatever the, <laughs> the whole beginning of that concept. He was a crusader, but so I say. But he really got to me with that uh, with the golden finger thing. I'm <laughs> but that's politics for you. And so, um, as Buckminster Fuller said, you know, you can take all the politicians and, <laughs> and put them on the next uh, moonshot, and it wouldn't be any big loss for us. But uh, they're in charge, and, and sadly, they know it, and they make laws, and they've made they've made my life a living hell. They made everything I like illegal, everything. <laughs> so, the fact that I'm not allowed to uh, say on on uh, Table, uh, on TV that I'm gay is, is a little comfort for all of the other restrictions they've placed. We had uh, I was big I was involved in uh, I want to just go on a little bit with my life history. I was involved after the 1940s in the peace movement of, of the 60s, and we uh, we just you know said listen, this war in, in Vietnam is a bad thing, and there is no reason for us to continue it. Uh, the politicians dug in their heels and started putting and putting up all sorts of things. Help came along in the way of Timothy Leary and the Beatles and Bob Dylan was was a wonderful, wonderful crusader in that process, and I love him for it. I had I give you a little story about I was <laughs> I went through a lot of different careers. And one of my careers was being a lamp. Uh, a, a electrical lamp, light, a lamp and light fixture repair guy in a li in a light store. Believe it or not, but there was you know, yeah, it was simple electronic. If you understand, uh, if you understand the circuitry of a lamp, you understand circuitry. That's all there is to it. The most complex computer circuit and a, and a light and a lamp. Uh, it's the same basic thing. You have a power source. A way to get the power to a a, a, a a control mechanism, and a way to get the power from the control mechanism to the device, and that's a lamp. That's a that's a uh, that's a memory chip. That's a hard drive. That's a you know that's a that's a, a generator, a, an electric motor, whatever the hell it is. That's it. No, so anyhow, I was fixing lamps because it was <laughs> it was a. Uh, but it paid 85 bucks a week, you know, and I lived in, the, in my uh, Airstream trailer in a, in a little trailer park in, uh, in, in the San Fernando Valley. And it was fantastic life. I rode a bicycle. My, my, my truck blew up and I, had, I was stuck there and it was, <laughs> it was heaven on earth. So anyhow, uh, that was, in fact, that was the name of the trailer park, heaven on earth. <laughs> Oh, there's a whole line of story there. Where did I get? Oh, anyhow, so we got involved in the peace movement, and um, and and, the, and uh, the the guys that uh, were, there were two ways of getting out of the draft. One is uh, you could go to jail directly, or you could go to Canada and then go to jail. No, Canada didn't lock you up, but you go Canada and Sweden were the only two countries that I could recommend with with certainty that you would get uh, 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 safe harbor in. And uh, 
and so we, as the war wound down, you know, and then after the war, and since the war, I get this every once in a while from my the people that know that I was a peacenik and stuff. Uh, well, you know, I came back uh, from Vietnam, and they uh, and they spit on my uniform. <laughs> and I said to him then, and I say to him now, uh, well, you know, you were wearing the uniform, you know, that people saw uh, as they as a, as a watch uh, uh, you drop napalm on little girls in, in Vietnam. And so somehow having napalm on a little girl and spit on your uniform, you know, I don't feel sorry for you, dude. You know, you should have said no. That you, you're the one that dropped the napalm, not me. So before you start pointing your finger at this old veteran who got through eight years of reserve without killing anybody or dropping napalm on anybody, let me just say that peace wins out in the long run. You just have to live long enough to enjoy it. And with that, I say we're going to end this now 11 minute video. Nigel Kent, wishing you the best.